Hi, this is Bill Guesswitch. Today I want to update our app by integrating Bootstrap and navigation into the app. The agenda for today will be install Bootstrap into our solution, add a main layout to our app, and add a navigation bar to our app, and then update the navigation to use the navigation bar. So let's go to Visual Studio and get started. Here we are back in Visual Studio. We're in the Blazor app from scratch project. We have the counter component we created the other day, and we have the index component that we modified the other day. Right now, both components are referencing one another, which is not a very scalable way to build an application. So today we're going to add in the navigation and make the UI look nicer. And we're going to use Bootstrap for that. For those of you who don't know, Bootstrap is a third-party library, open source, that contains CSS and JavaScript to make your UI look much nicer and your UI responsive. The video today is not a Bootstrap course, so I'm not going to go into a lot of detail on Bootstrap. We're just going to use the pieces we need. So if you want more information, go to getbootstrap.com and check out the documentations and examples. They're very good. So going back to Visual Studio, first thing we need to do is add a location for the Bootstrap files to live in. There's a very standard file folder name, and that folder name is called www.root. So the first thing I want to do is add a new folder and call it www.root. Once that folder is there, the next thing we want to do is we want to install the Bootstrap files. To do that, we right-click on the project name. I like to use LiveMan, and there is a UI available, so that's why I do it this way. There are other ways to do it, but this seems to be the most effective for me. You click on Add, and you click on Client Side Library. For the provider, we'll leave it at CDN.js. And Bootstrap is a Twitter product, so it's under Twitter dash Bootstrap. It pre-populates the most current version. And then I only like to pick a couple of files. The files I like to pick are bootstrap.min.cs and the other one should already be selected as bootstrap.min.js. And then instead of putting it in a folder called Twitter Bootstrap, I like to just get rid of the Twitter and keep it in Bootstrap. So it goes in the www root slash lib slash bootstrap. Now if you already created the folder, That'll be the default, and it'll all be set up for you already. When we install it, a couple of things happen. First thing that happens is LiveMan JSON gets created, contains the link. It's just the way to tell Visual Studio that we're using that. And then Visual Studio creates the files that we asked to download. They're in Live, Bootstrap, they're CSS, and JavaScript. The next thing we want to do, and this is just to uh, make a, an application that looks very similar to the Microsoft templates that you'll use, is we're going to add our own CSS. And in order to do that, we're going to right click on the www root file, add, I'm going to put it in a folder called CSS. And then the common name for the CSS that you put in a site is site.css. So we'll go to add another item. I'll search for CSS. I'll choose the style sheet and we'll call this site.css. Now rather than bore you with typing all the details here, I'm going to go copy the standard Microsoft template site CSS and bring it in here. I brought in the site CSS file from the standard Microsoft template. I'm not going to go into the CSS right now, but we will reference this as we go through the application. So now that we have the site CSS file in there, the next thing we need to do is reference Bootstrap and reference our site CSS file in the underscore host file. And we do that because the underscore host file is the first file that gets created and loaded by the browser. And that tells the browser what to load for every page. So here we are in the host file. 
we need to add a couple of things into the host file. We need to add the two bootstrap files and we need to add the site file. So the way I like to do that rather than type in the code is just to drag them from the solution explorer over to the code. So the first one we'll pull over is the CSS file. Drag and drop it in there. We'll put it right before the end of the head section. Next thing we'll do is I like to keep the, the CSS files together. So we'll bring in the site CSS file next. Put that right after it. And then we'll bring in the Bootstrap JavaScript. There you have it. Now you have Bootstrap and our custom site file loaded for any Razor component that loads within this application. Let's close up www.root and the next step is to update the app Razor file. As we mentioned the other day, the app Razor file is the main file that is loaded for all Blazor applications. It's the driver and loads all the subsequent other components. So that's the first thing we need to modify. So what we want to do within the app component is we want to define some standard layouts. Rather than always load in an application that has a, ray, has a navigation bar or has a header, rather than load that on every component, what we'd rather do is do that in a default layout. For those of you who are familiar with Razor Pages and MVC, it's traditionally called the underscore layout file. Within a Blazor application, what we call it is a main layout file, but you still have to reference it somewhere. And this is where you reference it. So within the app razor file, you add a, another attribute next to in the route view tag that's called default layout. And you make that at type of main layout. Now, what you'll see here in a second is main layout because it's not defined, has a red squiggly under it. We'll, we'll define that shortly. The other thing we want is rather than just show, sorry, no, sorry, there's no route here, just on a plain vanilla uh, HTML page, we also want the default layout to, to load when it's not found. Remember from our other video, this is what happens when the route is found, and this is what happens when it's not. So in order to put the layout down here, we add another tag called layout view. We say the layout is equal to the same thing at type of main layout. There we go. And we'll end that. And we will put the paragraph tag in between. All right. So as you notice, we have main layout, still under squiggly. So now let's go define main, main layout. In order to find common components, I like to put those in a separate folder. In this case, and the Microsoft standard, at least in the templates, is to put it in a folder called shared. So we'll add a new folder. and we'll call that shared. Now within the shared folder are going to be two components. So we'll do add new item. We'll click on ASP.NET Core. We'll search for Razor. And of course, let's make sure we choose the Razor component. And we'll call the first one main layout. Now, rather than bore you with the details of main layout, let me copy that over and I'll explain it once I copy it over. Now we have the code copied in for main layout. I'll explain a couple of things. First, it inherits from layout component base. Any layout that you use needs to inherit from that standard component. The next thing is you'll see class equals sidebar. Sidebar happens to be CSS that is defined in the site CSS file and is used just to make this look a little nicer when we run it. Nav menu right now has an under squiggly and you'll see there that that means that that is a component but the component is yet to be defined. All of this other stuff here 
is now you've got the sidebar loading first and then you've got the main part of the application loading. All we do have here is a about button just to just to show you how to create a nice uh, navigation bar at the top and then on this the rest of the body the next part is this at body and that's a razor directive that loads the body of the application. It's very standard between MVC, Razor Pages, and now Razor Components. So that's defined. The next one we're going to define is Nav Menu. Let's go create a new item. And we'll search for Razor. Razor Component. Call this Nav Menu. And then, once again, there's a lot of typing here, so rather than me type on the video, I'll just copy it in. Here's the nav menu component. I've copied in the HTML markup first, and then I'll bring in the code. I wanted to show you the red squigglies and talk through a couple of things. So the HTML that's being loaded up here is pretty standard for navigation bar. It has a nav brand which which you'll see is could be a logo in the upper left hand corner here it's just going to say blazer app and then there's a button and this button is a special kind of button it's a nav bar toggler so when the screen gets to a certain size so like on a mobile phone instead of showing the menu it's going to actually show just the that hamburger menu they call it and then that hamburger menu on click if you notice, at, at, on click now is it used to be JavaScript that was called here, but instead we're going to call a C sharp method that we'll define in the code section. It's called toggle nav menu. Down here, you'll see that there's a, a navigation bar and navigation links, and the one that's defined so far is for the index. As you can see, the href here is equal to blank, which is the index file, as we discussed in the last one. And then the name is home. So this is a navigation link that'll have home that'll link to the index razor component. So now let's go resolve the red squigglies. I've copied in the code, and let's go through it. So the first one is just defining a local variable called collapse nav menu equals true. The next one is to define nav menu CSS class, which is this here, the class that uh, is for this div. And that is going to be equal to the word collapse if the collapse nav menu is true. And it will be equal to null if, it's, if collapse nav menu is not equal to true. So how does collapse nav menu get changed? Well, it gets changed anytime toggle nav menu changes. Collapse nav menu equals not collapse nav menu. And that gets, this method gets called whenever you click on the button and whenever you click on a menu item. The important thing here to, to understand is that the nav bar toggle is a very specific type of class that will only show up when the screen size gets to a certain size and having a navigation bar would take up too much screen real estate. So this is a bootstrap feature that does all of that work for you behind the scenes. Again, if you want more information on bootstrap, you can go check out the documentation. So now let's run it and see what happens. Oh, we get an error. Let's see what the errors are. Ah, uh, okay, I see. Let's go back to the app razor. main layout isn't resolving. Why isn't it resolving? Well, it's not resolving because in the imports.razor file, we did not add the using for blazor app from scratch dot shared. Now when we do that, going back to the app class, app razor file should reconcile in a second. Uh, make sure that we save everything. And there we go. Now let's run it. And there we have it. We have a Blazor app. We have a nicer looking UI here. And we have a home button for the main page. Now we can get to the counter. Let's see what happens when we do that. 
We can do that, but that's not the right way to navigate. So let's update the navigation here to make it even nicer. So back in Visual Studio, let's go over to the nav menu. First thing that we need to do is we need to add in the link for counter on the left navigation bar. So the first thing we want to do is up copy this, control C, control V, and we just need to modify a couple of things. Under href, we have to put the word counter, because remember that's the name of the page. We could have also put blazer counter. And then we want to call the menu item counter. We'll save that. And then what we want to do is go to each component and we no longer need the reference back to the to it. So let's get rid of that reference there. And we'll get rid of this reference here. Actually, we'll get rid of all of that. There we go. And then we want to do one more thing. I just want to show you a little bit more bootstrap. So next to the button, we can do class equals button btn space btn dash primary. That'll make the button look a little nicer. Let's run it. Hello from my first Blazor app. We go to counter. We can increase the counter. We can go back to home, go back to counter. And there you have it. Our first Blazor app that actually looks pretty professional. Thank you for listening to this video. And if you have any additional questions, please don't hesitate to contact me at any of the information below.